Who gets the first question today? Because I guess it's me. Who do you want to have the first question? Steve. <laughs> well, I just asked it, so sorry. <laughs> um, I was slick. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do it either. Yeah. Um, what What did you think of of the way things went for you guys offensively? The other, just general thoughts. Not good enough to win. Um, I thought there was a lot of good. I was proud of a lot of um, a lot of the way a lot of guys played. I thought it was the offensive line did a nice job um, gelling together. I thought it was the best they played from a protection standpoint and a run game uh, standpoint. I was uh, happy with the way we t we took advantage of the bye week um, and improved some areas we need to improve. We got to find a way to finish the game. You know, you get the ball back with three minutes and 46 seconds, and uh, you know, on the 47, we made a first down. It was one of the 47 yard lines. If we can get points right there, if we can find a way to finish one more series, um, you know, it's that's. In that type of game, that's what you have to have, and it's what, it's what you need. But I thought that overall we played well. I thought there were some players that um, played key roles for us that hadn't – that the bye week helped, um, you know, through scheme, through rotation of the um, uh, the player rotation, those things. I, I thought that a lot of people were, were close. We're close. We're close to playing the way we needed to play in that game to win. Just got to finish. Uh, kind of sticking with that, you mentioned end of game and also end of the first half, not closing out that. What is the key to maybe having more success in those situational moments? Did you get a haircut? I did get a haircut. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, it really comes down to, and it's simple and it's boring. It's the it's fundamentals. It's finishing the right way. It's, you know, playing good football in the fourth quarter. Um, we, had, we had a couple opportunities there where it's just technique things, um, and it's, it's, it's close. Um, it's making sure that we're – we're emphasizing the right thing at practice, um, that we're drilling the right things, the, the right techniques, and giving our guys the best chance to be successful. And like I said, it was um, it was close, but you know we didn't we didn't finish the way we needed to, and so the score ended the way it did. You kind of hinted at it, you know, coming out of the bye week that there was going to be some changes, and obviously yeah. one of the most notable changes was just with the offensive line mm -hmm. again. Well, like you said, you know, not enough overall, but what did you like about what they were able to do? Obviously, an injury occurred later on, and I'm sure that threw some wrenches into the thing, into the mix. Yeah, I thought it was um, – I thought it was a group that gave us a chance in um, in the run game and um, gave us a chance to do some different stuff schematically just by, just by body types, and it wasn't just – we weren't relying on one scheme, and those guys played well together, um, which is hard to do. That doesn't happen overnight. That's why – you normally uh, offensively the bye week helps so much because you get a you get a junk you got ten days to work on an opponent you got ten days to work on yourself and um, do those things and our guys took advantage of it and uh, worked really hard during that week and in that week going into it because um, it doesn't happen it's not we just, you don't just make a change like oh we're good we're fine like here it is this 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 is the magic wand it was five guys still got to see the game through one set of eyes and now you put Rashawn over at right tackle and all of a sudden Tro plays his best game. You know, it's kind of like, hey, you you made, you affected this team in a positive because you changed positions, and you're you've you've just played so much and you're intelligent. You're helping uh, the guy next to you become a better player as well. And that's what's hard about the offensive line is, it's not just your five best players; it's your five best as a group. And then you know, so then Nick helping Tree and uh, and and Trey coming in and help being able to help him communicate those things. So I thought they did a good job on, the, on those type things. Uh, there's still a couple things that. Playing together would help a little bit more, but they, they, they played well enough to win. That group did. And they, they deserve a lot of credit. Dal Mario uh, Anderson was in here yesterday, said he felt like Montario tore him down and built him yeah. back up. I mean, just what did that look like, you know, when he came in as a D2 guy versus where you feel like he's at now? Yeah, um, I think what that meant was, like, Mario's a talented kid. And when you move from Newberry and all of a sudden you are the big fish in a little pond, and now you come to the SEC, and it's kind of like, hey, big guy, like this at Newberry, like you're like just you're competing against the best week in, week out. Like you got to kind of lose that little. Uh, he's got a little swagger about him, which is good, and it's a fine line of being able to, <clears throat> like, hey, know your role, earn your place. Like some of the stuff you got away with there, you're not going to get away from, away with here because these defenses are fast and. You can dance behind the line and you can do those type things, but this is a physical two-chin strap league that you better be ready to run through people and get downhill. 
And that's why, and it's the part of the rotation of why he it took him a little bit to play is because he was still learning how to play at this level, not being just I'm not gonna say bigger, but stronger and faster than everyone. Um, and so he's he's earned it. And most of the time, when you go through something really hard, you come out on the other side better, and you get forged in the fire. And for Mario, it's not easy. It's not easy to come in all of a sudden. You were the starter. You're at Newberry. And you're the man. And all of a sudden, now you come to South Carolina. And it's like you're in the SEC. Well, you're not the man. And everything's earned. So for him to go through the process he's gone through to this point um, has made him a better football player. He wouldn't be the football player if Coach Mo hadn't been hard on him and he didn't teach him and grow. But he took the coaching. And he took the coaching. He took the hard coaching. And it's made him better for it. Now those that hard work and the resolve and the ability to get through a little bit of adversity is showing up on the field for him. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Great to meet you. Um, Trey Knox has had 15 catches the, the last two weeks. A lot of He had the nice touchdown. A lot of the stuff, though, yeah. seemed like it was going underneath. What, what does he do um, for the passing game and for Spencer? Trey's really intelligent, um, and he knows the offense as well as anyone. You know, he was with us at, at Arkansas, so he knows a little bit of the stuff we brought from Arkansas. And um, he's just a really bright guy, so he's, he learns fast. So he's a calming presence in the in the huddle. And, you know, he can he go in there and coach the tight ends. That's how sharp he is. He can tell the wideouts where to get lined up. And um, so then all of a sudden you're playing some younger guys, and he's breaking the huddle. And he, there, I, there's been times when he's told Spencer, whoa, 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 check it the other way. Um, he's just sharp. And so it's a very calming um, – he has a calming presence for Spencer. He's a guy who knows what to do. He knows how to do it. Um, there's things in his game that he needs to continue to improve and we're working with on. But he just he's he's smart, tough, and dependable. And that's what you're looking for. And that's what that's what he gives us. And to his credit, I mean it's fifteen catches in two games and um, he's done a nice job for us. He's a, he's an important part of this offense and his presence allows us to play some younger guys, just like Rashawn playing next to Tro. It allows Nick and Tyshawn and some of those guys to get out there because when he's on the field with them, he can also help and direct them. Coach Beamer mentioned yesterday the progress that Harbor's made and how yeah. hard he's worked. How goes it to see one for one him make that catch and two, just how hard have you seen him work to get to where he is? Yeah, and that well, I mean, we've talked about him. I know he's a name that gets talked about a lot, but he's a great kid and he is and he's humble. And what I love about Nick is Nick knows exactly where he's at. He's not a kid. He knows he has he has work to do, and he's going to be a really really good player. Um, he knows he's not quite there yet with everything. Um, but I love what he – he keeps his mouth shut. He's patient. He just keeps working. And, he, and yeah, there's – does he – he has to live with the expectations because of how many stars were attached to his name in recruiting that get dumped on him um, outside this building. And he does a really good job because he's a humble kid and he's got great parents of um, – knowing that the only way to produce on the field is to work hard and to keep your mouth shut. And, and some of this, the expectation, and you talk about expectations, he has the same expectations that we do. So we're aligned. Um, and that's what I appreciate about Nick. He's not selfish. He knows where he's at. He knows where he needs to keep working. He needs to, he doesn't have an arrogance about him. He's not a me guy. Um, he can, he can take um, hard coaching. He can also, he has a, there's a, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, a realization of what the situation is, and he's embracing that, and he's gonna work hard, uh, kind of like Mario. Like there's a, there's gonna be a process, and I love the I saw a quote, uh, "My time's coming." He knows he's not there yet, but he knows through hard work he can get to where he wants to go, where we all want him to go. And I love that about Nick Harbor. Yep. How nice was it for y'all, and I guess Juju specifically, to see him be able to get loose a couple times the other day after that sort of talking point yeah it, it was it was awesome um juju is made of the right stuff he's a competitive competitive kid and he brings something different to this offense and he's a energy giver at practice he's an energy giver when things are hard um and he probably hadn't played as much as he wants as, as wanted to but i've never heard a word about it maybe he's had those conversations with coach mo um sitting in the quarterback room every day and coaching those guys I normally have a pretty good pulse on the team because those guys are most of the time the most well liked guys, and they've got uh, they've got the ear of the locker room, and so I'm privy to some information, conversations sometimes, like so I know who's griping, and who's not. Um, and Juju's always he's a pro. He know he knows what to do, and he does it. He shows up every day and works, and it's it's the whole thing. Like no one, we're not happy with where we're at right now, 
but we're happy with how our kids are working and growing and just keep your mouth shut just keep working hard and, and good things happen like just keep playing hard keep cleaning keep getting better and Juju does it every day and you need guys like that your veterans that set the standard for everyone and continue to work with the right attitude when things aren't going the way you want them to and if you do that you survive these hard times and, and you're better for them and Juju gets should get a lot of credit for those things. You face this Blake Baker defense at Mizzou when you were with Arkansas. What stands out about that scheme and what you're going to see Saturday? I think uh, he and Coach Drinkwitz do such a great job, not not only just recruiting, because uh, they, they've done a great job building a good roster, but uh, they, those kids play hard. The scheme's tough because they're good up front. They've got good corners. they got a couple good linebackers. Um, it's not overly complicated, and you can tell, like, what does that mean? It's no. It means that they do a really good job of recognizing where their talent is and allowing them to play fast. Um, and they, they do. They play fast, they're aggressive. Um, I, I know Coach Trinkowitz and Coach Baker, they're one of the part of their thing is to affect the quarterback, and they, they do that every week. Dale, not to go backwards too far, but you know we don't have a chance to be able to talk to you after the Florida game. I think there's like, what, 440 left, second down, you guys take a shot downfield. Uh, what was just the thought process of that? You know, obviously you guys are trying to chew the clock up, but you guys have had opportunities down down the field. And you guys were successful throughout the game. Yeah. Did that play a role? Yeah, it, it was a role of like, what is it going to take to win this game? Uh, what was the score at that point? Like thirty seven to thirty, thirty seven thirty four. Yeah. Chances are they get the ball back, and they're scoring points too. So it's not. I think there's a there's three four, there's three different ways to play four minute. This is how I see four minute. Um, there's a game where you call your three best runs, regardless of what's happening. There's the one where you call the first play and see what happens. And then there's the, uh, hey, we better call our three best plays. And when you're playing a tier one quarterback, uh, you're playing a, an offense that's scoring points, if you don't do that and you punt it back to them and say, hey, go win it, defense. Yeah, it's on y'all. Like, y'all go. We did our – we ran our three plays and punted it back. This happened to us in Chicago. We're playing the Lions, tier one quarterback, Matthew Stafford. I think it was very similar. I think it might have been 34-37. And we did – we ran the ball three times. Punted it back to Stafford. Stafford, Megatron, go score. Minute 14, they win the game, beat us. For, you know, it was like 38-37 or something like that. And so, every game's played differently. And when a team's scoring on you – um, and it's complimentary football. It's three phases, and that's why we need to finish that last drive. But it's also, look, we trust number seven. He's our best player. Um, so let's put the ball in his hands. Like the offensive line did a great job. Mario did a great job. But number seven's a guy, and let's let's dance who brought us. And he he played. He's seen the field well. He was doing some good things. And he that was a super aggressive shot, super aggressive. Um, but in that at that point, that's what it was. It was like we could run the ball three times, punt it to him, and I could have sat in in the press box and drank a diet coke, saying I hope I hope we hold him. But at that point, it, we felt like the best thing to win the game and communicate with Coach Beamer is let's be aggressive and let's see if we can put something together right here and and flip the field and put them back worst case scenario or go try to go try to make this a, a two possession game again. Thank you, Appreciate you guys.